Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome Hello. to the Heaven Trouble Show here on a Thursday now at 5 p.m. Yes, we've been time hopping, but only because we're trying to figure out the best time for us, the best time for you. And um, Lisa, I have to tell you something. I like this time. It's a nice time. The lighting is. You vain bitch. The lighting is dumb. Golden hour. Glowing and thing. What a bunch of people. How, yeah. are you How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing okay. A little sad this afternoon because, you know, Colin Robinson passed today and um, then passed by me. I mean, he died. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, my condolences. Thank you. And um, But my condolences to the whole of the um, activist community, the LGBTI, LGBT, LGBTQIA plus community in Trinidad and Tobago and in New York as well, because he was, you know, kind of founding member over there as well in a lot of circles. And the poetry community, um, he touched so, and the Calypso um, research community, he touched so many different spheres um, yes. during his time. So bless God for him and may he rest in peace. Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, I have a, a link here to, sorry, children, mm -hmm. to an article that you sent me. Um, so I'm just trying to pull it up here, but uh, could you tell me just a little bit more about him while I do that? So Colin, um, Colin was a St. Mary's boy and he was gay and he moved to New York like in the eighties and he was, you know, was an active in the spoken word movement, active in, in um, HIV advocacy. And then he came back to Trinidad and did all those same things and was not spoken with so much as written poetry. Um, and he also was a, an avid researcher in Calypso because he, I mean, this guy did research on queerness in Calypso. It was, it's, you know, it's really good, solid research and hilarious. So this is actually a piece I wrote last year. Newsday commissioned me to do, um, well, one of the last interviews that he would do. And I told him, treat it like it's, I said, do this one for the Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. So he has That's like his. Therapy. Yeah. So anybody who wants to do a Wikipedia article on Colin Robinson, now you have a good resource. It has his date of birth, place of birth, parents' names, jobs, everything. And the reason I did it this way is because when, when you want to put um, an article on Wikipedia, you really need to have a source that says the things. You can't say, oh, I know he was born on so-and-so. Yes, you actually a verified need a, source. Yeah. Yes. And so this would be a verified source. So go, go forth and Wikipedia eyes, Colin Robinson, <laughs> please, you guys. I yeah. think that's a, that would actually be the kind of tribute you might appreciate. <laughs> I think so. That's why I did it like that. But, you know, um, anyway... Yeah, he was a he was a real when I say a character, I mean the kind of person who you didn't want to make him vex because he could be mean. <laughs> <laughs> but all oh, but always so sweet in general and so thoughtful and so like really clever, really, really one of the cleverest people. I mean, he was one of the people who um he and Nicholas Lachlan and Georgia Popplewell, maybe when you're around them, you feel dumb. Not not because of yourself, but just because they so they know so much. You know what I mean? I I completely understand. You know, um, <laughs> I think people like him are treasures. You know, they're treasuries of experiences of a lot of undocumented, otherwise undocumented knowledge and information. Um, you know, particularly coming from the LGBTQI community, um, because that's you know that that's a a, a really under storied community in our in our little island you know where nobody wants to say who was what and da, 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 da. but you know these stories would give people so much more of a grounding mm -hmm. um you know I, I remember going to places like metal house and all these different venues where you know you would see just amazing talent and grace and you know, things you wouldn't see in straight places, if you know what I mean. I do know yeah. what you mean. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a kind of artistry that needs to be to be known and seen. And, you know, and, and 
people like that have left Trinidad, um, flee, fleed from Trinidad, fled. fled. Thank you, thank you, uh, and gone to live in other countries because you know they did not find that acceptance here. And for him to to be here and stay here and to contribute for as long as he did, um, that couldn't have been easy in this place and space. So. Salute. Salute. And I mean, he, he, he I, I don't know if he came up with it, but he certainly was one of the people behind one of my favorite t-shirts, which is, I don't know if you've ever seen it, the homosexual agenda. And like the first one is by Cricks. And it's like, of course, we're just human people, you know, um, and we like Cricks too kind of thing, you know, so yeah. he had a I terrific will, sense of humor. Terrific. Avril says, um, you didn't want a cuss out from Colin. No, <laughs> no, he would read you. Even hi, when, even, Avril. Hi, Avril, and my condolences to you too, you know, um, like I said, you know, he was a member of the queer community in New York, as well as the poetry community in New York as well, so. You know, anyway, bless up, bless up, bless up. Colin, remember me when you um, are talking to Jesus about your peeps. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so what else is going on in the world, girl? You know, I live under a rock. Tell me. Do you? <laughs> well, <laughs> International Women's Day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's International Women's Day. So that means there are things happening, all right? So we could take a look at some of the things and the people who are doing them. Um, this is an interesting campaign, you know, within the age of social distancing, people are doing different things. Um, so we have quite a few groups to do better um, together, different organizations, and they are the Coalition of Anti-Gender-Based Violence Initiatives and they're calling on the Trinidad and Tobago public to join to drive gender-based violence out. So it is a national motorcade, mot, what it is? Motorcade. Motorcade, motorcade, right? Against gender-based violence in recognition of International Women's Day. So on Sunday, the vehicles gather at 9 a.m. at South Park Mall in San Fernando and end at the Queen's Park Savannah in Port of Spain. So, and where if you don't have no car? If you don't have a car, um, they have to ask for a ride or um, maybe they'll have... Um, you can stand up on the route with a flag and wave them. I yeah, <laughs> something. Right? There's also this, which I think is kind of interesting. This is happening on Monday, the 8th March at 2 p.m. Um, and again, it's a few different organizations coordinating this activity. It's a walk out for women, right? So they're saying walk out with us on International Women's Day to call on the government and opposition for immediate action to end gender-based violence. So Monday, the 8th of March at 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., walk out, if you're in Port of Spain, that is, and head to CityGate, and the end point is Woodford Square. So they're looking at people in Port of Spain, but I think they want people to walk out from everywhere. Um, you know, they want women to get up and basically walk out of the workplace. Um, I would say, try to have a plan for walking out. Um, no way you're gonna go. You don't wanna like, you know, you don't have dramatic music <laughs> playing after you. <laughs> Unless you walk with it, I mean, you could, you could do it to the nines, my girl, and you know, have a little walkout music. Put it on. I don't know. It. I don't know it? how aggressive I could be walking out of my house, you know. People will just be like, Hey Lisa, how are you going? Yeah, you like I do. What are you doing outside? Just, I just walk out a little bit. Walk okay. out. <laughs> it's not a man's dinner. Just walk out the taxi. No, but, seriously. but this is how... <laughs> No, 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 I don't think that's what they mean by work, by walkout. But I, 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 um, that's a run out actually. That's yeah. that's when you run out the maxi. But I, I, not that I've ever done that. Never. But, you? but this, <laughs> no, I put it that. Never. Not on purpose. The the COVID pandemic has really allowed gender based violence to fester. You know, a lot of people are trapped in their homes, still quarantining with people who are abusing them in different ways, including children, 
you know, and elders, you know, and the fact that because we're not going in and out of each other's homes as much as we were before the pandemic means that a lot of shit could happen in the dark, you know? So yeah, this is an important, as much fun I'm making about, as fun as much fun as I've been making about how you're going to work out. It's a really important initiative because yeah, people are really suffering and it's, and, 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 I mean, I don't know. What do you think legislatively the, the solution is? So, Well, I, I don't know if it's legislative or if mm. it's, I think it's more about, um, I think it's more about going, about the police enforcing. Um, I think that's the main thing, to have uh, women be believed, to have things like protection orders and violation of protection orders and things like that enforced, to have tracking of individuals, you know, um, it's come out that some of these individuals were well known mm -hmm. in their community, mm -hmm. known by this one, known by mm -hmm. that one. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah, everybody knows he's a raper man or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, people are like, well, we were new to the area, nobody told us. And I'm like, um, you know, yeah. that, is, that is a serious issue. One of, one of those guys, police beat to death, and I'm really not pleased that they be, beat somebody to death, yeah, but man. the guy had seven day charges pending. I mean, are you out here in the free world? How is that even yeah. possible? So, and he have a friend now who he got bail. That's not the point. <laughs> the system is broken. You can't have people like broken, out man. here. The system I mean, is, come on. You know, you have That's to warn people, you know, there and I mean, yes, there's a balance of it in terms of people feeling ashamed or that kind of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if you do certain things, then this is some of the realities. And if people feel these consequences through the system, through enforcing the system, you, you will catch a lot of things before it gets to the point where you have 70 charges. People have 70 right. charges because they could shrug it off in this country. This is a lawless land. Our detection rate is what? 3%, 4%? It's pathetic is what it's it is. Ridiculous. You know. You know, so our system is obviously fully broken. Um, judiciary, the judiciary is a whole scene um, with how things are run over there, how efficient it is, how well it works. You know, it seems kind of mad to me. Uh, our whole system of cases and lawyers and the fact that if I get a case now, it's not going and try until 2027, <laughs> 2032. <laughs> you know, that is serious. You know, we have people in jail on remand who have not been tried or convicted, who have mm -hmm. been in excess of 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. woo! you mm -hmm. know, how can women be safe? in that environment when the section, possible that means that you can get you can get you can get caught and be out and back at it again and it's almost consequence free if you don't mind the whole stress of being caught and the whole processing you know? yeah but it's like a minor inconvenience once it you make a deal you're it out there you in know? the world yeah and speaking you know? of that um one of the very cool things that is happening um, at Overtwo Mantra and Co is that they have opened a, a legal clinic mm. for women, uh, specifically looking at gender-based violence. So I think speaking of the problems we have with the judiciary, mm. <laughs> the functioning of our legal system, here we have an organization that sees that as an issue and is putting things in place and it's just open fresh open right in time for international women's day um uh, i suspect they're going to be swiftly overwhelmed but you know every mickle makes a muckle and i'm hoping that it's a movement that spreads i'm hoping that um attorneys give up their time and talent to you know handle the capacity and i'm hoping that the system is is not too broken that we can't start to fix it you know and this Elma Francois, you you have information about that individual, don't you? Well, <laughs> Elma uh -huh. Francois is amazing. I um, she's she's a character. When I say, I mean, she's a, a person, a historical figure 
um, that I've been aware of for some time, you know, many years ago, I, I saw a show. Um, I can't remember who, I think it was produced out at UE. Um, it was in that um, up at the Gordon Street campus, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember Jovan Abraham was in it and Camille Kwamina, I think, played Elmo. And that was an amazing show. And it was another reminder of how amazing our history is in Trinidad and how little we know about it and how that could ground us, you know, like me as a little black girl growing up here in stories about Elmer Francois, well, you know what that could do? I suppose that's why. <laughs> I'm now reading this. Oh. Trade unionist, Afrocentrist, Marxist, mm -hmm. anti-colonial, anti-war, cotton picker, domestic worker, activist, black woman, mother, born in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, migrant who lived and worked in Trinidad and Tobago, a national heroine. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about giving trouble. Yes. And listen, if I have all these things after my name when I go on, I good enough. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them there, but what am I really doing about it? You know, what are so, you yeah. doing about my, it? My head soon should say Lisa Allen Agostini, born 1973, died, whatever. She gave a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> One could only hope. One to a new. You know, we need all of us, we need to give more trouble. You know, things too free and easy in this sweet land of Mama Guy. <coughs> right? So there's the walkout. And did we talk about the drive out? We talked about, we the, talk drive about out. the drive out. The drive out, there's a walkout. Make mm -hmm. sure and catch the Elma Francois Legal Clinic if you need help. You know, put push people in this direction, people who might need some help. Um <sighs> transitioning out of a difficult relationship legally make sure you get your things so that nobody take your things this is something that i this is an initiative that i thought was really interesting it is a men's pledge and it's from an organization called carry man and ttt is a part of you know bringing this to life and you can check them out they have a website carryman.org and refreshingly it is for men it is a men's pledge yay yeah, what do you mean I, does it I mean that walk men with... can choose to not be violent in their relationships well Who i wouldn't knew? go that far lisa that would be to assume that men have self-control oh, oh no <laughs> or that they should be expected to oh right anyway Talk uh, about unrealistic gender expectations. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> well, the pledge is, I pledge to have peaceful relationships. I will never commit any form of violence, sexual assault, or abuse against women and children. And I will resolve conflicts without violence and ask for help when it is difficult to do so i don't know a single man who would be able to say this with any kind of integrity no, <laughs> you see that this about resol this. resolving resolving well resolving conflicts with without um violence yeah that's real hard for men i i don't think i could say this but i think wayne can <laughs> Yeah, I might be able to say it either. Sometimes a bitch need a slap. I don't know. Sorry, no, that's I not true. That's not no, true. Nobody <laughs> needs a slap. That's the problem. We are a very violent culture. You know. And and you have and we have to acknowledge it in ourselves, you know. I mean, if yeah. I if I'm scrolling looking for a movie and the movie don't have no violence, I continue scrolling. <laughs> You're disappointed. What? Like, no violence or what? nothing? Uh-uh. Boring. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, violence is so it's so easy to fall into. And especially for men where <clears throat> you know the idea of physical superiority is tied into masculinity. Yeah. And so when you when you think about the idea of being a man, you think about being able to physically subdue your opposition. Yeah. Doesn't matter if your opposition is is another man, an animal, a child, it doesn't matter. A girl, a boy, it doesn't matter. If somebody is standing up to you and in a way that you feel like you are losing the upper hand, yeah, there's some little switch inside that goes, oh, let me slap him down. And that's what they do. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it's, it, I think it's, you know, it, it goes to that deeper issue of 
us learning how to navigate relationships, um, things like feelings of ownership. You know, women, you know, we say uh, women are not men's property, but men are also not women's property. Uh, because we just parcel them out. Eh? We just be like, okay, well, all of these my friends, all the cabbie with no man I was with. You know, I mean, it's all of this stuff. So, uh, you, know, you know, if you want to talk about it, we have to talk about it. You know, um, Toko Nikki says that the pledge recognizes that men are human and can always recommit. Okay. And she also says about Elma Francois, she was the bomb. Yes, she was. Toko Nikki. <laughs> um, <laughs> but speaking about ownership and so on, can we talk about, you know, you've been, you've been, um, after me to talk about this for a while, about names, about women's yeah. names. Yeah. And when you get married, do you have to take your husband's name? And if you don't, like, what is the consequence? What happens? Well, you know, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a real interesting, I think, discussion. And I don't know if enough of us are having this discussion. I, 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 I think women now, like millennials and younger, I think they've decided they're not giving up their name. I think that's the consensus. Am I wrong? I don't know. I don't know a lot of young people who marry. Honestly, there you go. Just um, mm -mm. like, <laughs> um, yeah, I do. I don't know a lot of young people who. I lot. I know a lot of young people who move in together, but I. I don't know a lot of them who got married. And, and the, and the name change. So when I was when I got married, I was nineteen years old, same. and my, my um. Did you say same? You didn't get married. Same. You say it was nineteen years old. And I was like, <laughs> Not seen. I know. No, it's like he was a whole big woman. He in the nose hole. <laughs> but Seen. I was nineteen, and the <laughs> option was so my my uh, maiden name, as it were, <laughs> as it were, <laughs> maiden. <laughs> maiden. These terms, eh? Maiden. Sorry, maiden. My maiden name, as it were, was Allen, and Lisa <laughs> Allen is the most common name like lisa is common and alan is common and when you put them together in trinidad alone there were possibly three i took what the daycare that i took naja to the girl their name was lisa allen mm -hmm. not even a different spelling the same lisa allen and so there's no way you can have a career with a name that is like so um common so what's the word i'm looking for it's not distinctive. And so yeah, I see it's no, done. So, so what you're saying is that for you, marriage was a way to escape a boring name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm here still. Can you hear me? <laughs> Sorry, I got a phone call. <laughs> but I thought I turned all my notifications off, but the phone didn't know that. Anyway, oh, sorry about that. Tell me more. This is fascinating. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> but so no with the name thing so for me it was a decision that um i took my first husband's last name added it onto my own um well my father's name i wanted to keep my father's name but i also wanted to have some kind of more interesting judge on my name and then when i remarried many years later my name is already established as a brand so it's not like you know, sometimes when a company merges and they take one company's name. Yeah, so I kept my original company name during that merger. Because <laughs> the brand was strong. You know, so who you is Lisa be, McMahon? Nobody why knows you don't Lisa go for it and be like, go hard and be Lisa, Allen, Agostini, McMahon? Because books are only about this big. And yeah, when you put the name, it just doesn't make sense. Lisa Allen Agostini is already too long. Destroy every <laughs> online form ever. <laughs> then online forms would be like, why? <laughs> but I mean, when you get married, you are putting your name, or or, or the idea is you, the, person, the guy puts his name on you because he has property. And yeah. in the past, legally, that's what happened during a marriage. When well, you marry it, somebody, it, you become a property. It said who you belong <laughs> to. That's, that's probably why Toko said, my name is my brand on and off F mm -hmm. Facebook. Facebook mm -hmm. and she not changing mm -hmm. nothing. Freedom! Freedom! 
right? I changed my name. I didn't even think about it. I was like, yeah, get married. I'll change my name. And I liked Lee Singh because it started with an L. Like my first, I was like, Louis Lee Singh. Ooh. Then I realized that uh, people people started to confuse me with Louis Lee Singh or assume that I was related to him in some way. So I started using the Louis Martin Lee Singh formally because I was like, that made things easier. I mean, you know, it really caused me some little issues and some access. I ain't gonna lie, I've, you know, <laughs> taken advantage of my assumed to be daddy. But Louis Lee Singh and I, let me say it publicly. We are not related. He's not my father or my husband, as people have asked me. People are so, so a lady was like one time, she's like, Louis Lee Singh, you're Louis Lee Singh's wife. So I said, You think Louis Lee Singh's wife's name is Louis Lee Singh? <laughs> it could well be. You don't what? know. You don't know his life. Oh! <laughs> That's crazy. It should have had Gil. It should have had no surprise. <laughs> oh, she was like, <laughs> <laughs> what does I mean? I don't know. A smidge. <laughs> what I will say, what I will say is that, right? What I will say is that the expectation of changing your name is a major, it is an inconvenience. Like we have to do a lot of extra stuff to get our name name changed. If you already have a bank account, if you already have all of these things, you literally have to go around um you know, and, and have all those things change, you know, when your passport comes, you go to marriage certificate, you change that, you change, you change, you change, and you, that's for you to go and do. So it's, it's interesting, you know, and, and I, I definitely could see why women now, may or may not, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not on trend or anything, um, why women now may or may not, um, may not, may choose to not change their name you know if you had it to do all over again would you still change your name well for the reasons outlined above yes you know because um i mean i guess i could try a different brand i had thought about lisa simone yeah but that kind of sounds a little slight pony and i didn't know if that was the direction i wanted to go lisa in. simone in yeah because that's my middle name right? reads books it sounds a little corny. <laughs> so, I mean, I could have gone with that or Lisa Jenny, which is my other middle name, but I don't know. Yeah. I'm happy with what I, where I landed. And um, I mean, the Agostinis, it's is, is not that I'm a blood member of the family, but I, I don't think I made them shame. I mean, if I did, no, I'm sorry. No, nah, man. I apologize to nah. all the Agostinis who I made shame. But you know, by and large, I think they would be like, "Yeah, she's not really an Agustin, you know." But it's all right. <laughs> See, Avril says they gonna allow you. She and Kim kept their names as they have awesome names, <laughs> Boom. Boom. right? And Toko Nikki says, and this is interesting. But even if you don't change your name, the passport office asks for your marriage certificate. They don't ask men that. Because men don't change their name. Men don't change their name. You know? And then the thing is now, whose name should children take? Should children switch over and change, take their mother name or have a choice? Yeah. You yeah. might be like, well, hmm. We should do like them Spanish countries and have like, so your kids could be like um, leasing and leasing and um and Martin. and Martin, sorry, <laughs> black yeah. blank out there. You can choose, you can choose if they want, like, then they grow up, they can say, okay, at 18, I will be Clarice Martin. Okay, <laughs> Listen, you know, they have a choice. <laughs> I think that would be very cool. It would be crazy and it would be great because, you know, it would just mash up the whole idea of lineage, which I think is essential for, you know, ending the capitalist nightmare that is taking over all of our lives. And of which might be the linchpin, right? Nuclear family, working unit, that whole thing, you know. I mean, nuclear family makes it worth it for a man to go and give away his life to some corporation for the absolute minimum amount of money they're willing to pay. You know, so we just it's terrible. Minutes, terrible. You know? That's but why we I, have to keep giving trouble. We have to keep giving trouble. We have to keep giving trouble. But that's about our time today. So yes, I at half an hour. Look forward to our um, next show, and it'll be, I think, fingers crossed, this same time, same bad channel. Yes, we're um, sticking next to 5 p.m. next Thursday, and um, I'm we're still working out the kinks with the yes. YouTube. Oh, 
<laughs> had some trouble with the streaming key today. So we'll see what happens next week. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thanks for all your comments and all your thoughts. We really appreciate it. We appreciate your time and your energy. Take care. As Toko Nikki says, go out for the rest of the week and get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Wow. Wow. Don't forget the International Women Day. Drive out and walk out. Yes, drive out or walk out. Anywhere oh, it is, you can walk out. And this one having a show on the weekend too. Oh yes, I have a show this weekend. Oh, sure. no, we I have didn't mention. I have to show the, the, the thing. So as we go, um, take a look at this publicity for the Revenge of King Jab Jab, which returns to the Little Carib Theatre this weekend. Tickets are available where? Tickets Lyrics. are available at the um at the box office uh at uh, the little carib theater uh from today from four to seven as well as tomorrow from four to seven the show is on saturday and sunday at 7 p.m and i'm just doing my best here to to bring up a video to show you but you know how it is doing tech Maybe. Yeah, today I think the tech was just Ooh. not on our side. Tech was rough today. Oh, Slight yeah. rough. It was very rough. Very but rough. always worth it. Always. Bye. So yeah, just a very short mm -hmm. video. <laughs> All right. So don't miss the Revenge of King Jab Jab this weekend in Little Carib Theatre. Uh, it's my show. I produced it. It's really good. And we have a real nice International Women's Day twist. We have um, a mediator and counselor who's actually taken on a role in the show, um, Amanda Akbar Ali. And uh, she's from the opening Lotus. And, you know, she's performing. So it's going to be very exciting, guys. So take care of yourself. Take care of each other. We love you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.